What's up? Welcome back. We're doing day two of the advent of code. This one's called the Cube Conundrum. We were in our trebuchet and we got launched through the sky and we're just, boom, we're landing at the tip, at just the edge of an island in the sky called Snow Island. And we landed a pile of leaves because that's awesome. And then there's an elf that's going to walk us around. They're, I don't know, they're guiding us somewhere. And as they're going, they're playing this little game. They've got this bag and inside the bag, there's cubes. They keep pulling them out. I imagine they're like dice. We don't actually have numbers on the cubes. They're just different colors. And we've got to figure some stuff out about these different dice that are being pulled out of the bags. There's different games, different rounds. Here's our input. We've got to parse this input. When I first saw this problem, I got a little bit nervous because I had a flashback to college statistics where I thought we were going to have to figure out what is the probability? There's a red, but. No, we don't have to do that. It's quite simple. In fact, for part one, all we have to do is say whether or not a game is valid. And a game is valid if, if it was possible that the, the bag only had 12 red cubes, 13 green cubes, or 14 blue cubes. The way that this input looks is we have the game with some ID. that That is like the integer ID of the game. And then we have rounds. A round is the elf reached in the bag, pulled some cubes out, and then tells you the number of each of those cubes. So three blue and four red for this first round. Each round is separated by a semicolon. So we've got three blue, four red is the first round. One red, two green, six blue is the second round. And then two green is the third round here. What we want to know is just was it possible to, to play that game? Was that a valid game? If there was only 12 red cubes. So if we look at game three here, this one says that on round one, we pulled out 20 red cubes, which would not be valid. And then the way that we build our input for this game is that we're going to just take all of the IDs for the games that are valid. We're going to add them up and we're going to pop them into some puzzle input and hopefully we get back the right number. So for this sample input, we're expecting to get eight back because games one, two, and five are possible or valid and uh, the other ones are not. Let's get into it. Uh, we're just gonna grab this input here. We're gonna open up main.rb and we'll say our input is this stuff. Okay, little here doc there. And then we'll say data is input dot read lines or read or each line. Yeah. And then we'll say, we'll just get our result and that's gonna be data dot map do line and for now what i want to do is i want to parse out these lines and because there's a little bit of data here we have an id and then we have these rounds and each round kind of has some different attributes to it related to these objects i thought maybe it makes sense to probably have some sort of class called game that we can use to parse uh, some line and that would give us back an instance of a new game. So let's just say, eventually we're gonna call new with some game ID and some number of like rounds. And those rounds are going to be represented by the cubes that were pulled for that round. So let's make a new little initialize method here with an ID and rounds. And let's expose those so that we can pull those off later. Okay, and then when we're done here at the bottom, we'll just print out R. So as we iterate over the line, we'll say game.parse line. And for now, let's just print out game. Okay, so I'm gonna say ruby main.rb here at the bottom. Boom, all right, so there is no ID. Great, so we've gotta start pulling out the ID. And how do we get the ID out of this line? So GitHub Copilot is cheating there for us, but what I wanted to do is do like line.split on colon. And then I want to grab the first one, dot split. So we're going to split on colon. The first one is going to be this stuff. Then we're going to split again and we'll grab the last one and we'll map it to I or just, yeah, last dot two I. And that should give us some sort of ID. And then for rounds for right now, we'll just give it an empty array and we'll see if we're getting back games with those IDs. And it does look like we have uh, some games with IDs. So that's great. So uh, the next step is to parse out the rounds. On the right side of this split is the rounds. So instead of just grabbing the first one here and pulling off the ID stuff, uh, maybe we say, um, yeah, we'll have uh, first and last. 
or a rest or something. I don't know. First and last. So, uh, yeah. And then here we can just say first is that, and we run it. We've still got the same thing. Um, why I was hesitating there a little bit is because I think we might be able to even split on the semicolon here. So if we do something like this and we say split on colon or semicolon, then what is that going to give us? So this splat operator says if we have an array, grab the first one off the array and whatever's left over, put that in here. So we're doing a, a bit of destructuring. So now our rounds look like this. So now a round is just a so string of the first round, string of the second round, string of the third round. That looks good. You'll notice that the last round has a, a new line. So we can probably chomp that somewhere. But let's just chomp it here just to keep things clean. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to go over each of these groups. So last.map, we want to map over these. And I think what we want is a dictionary where we have blue points at three. So the keys are going to be the colors and the values are going to be the number that we pulled for that value. So let's do that. So we're going to say last.map. So this is going to be a, the string for the round. Do str round. And we want to split this again. Yeah. So we're going to split on the comma now because each round has a uh, a comma separated list of all of these objects and then for each of those we have a card yeah sure i don't know what does that give us okay so now we're getting pretty close but that doesn't look like what we want it so this is actually backwards so this is going to be like uh count and color Okay, so now we have blue and three, red and four, et cetera. Um, one, one like trick in Ruby is anytime you have these tuples where you have key and value pairs that are in arrays, you can relatively easily convert these into dictionaries. Yeah, so if we call dot 2h on the end of this, we get back blue points at three, red points at four, et cetera, et cetera. So that gives us kind of the dictionaries we want. But I think we want this to be a symbol we want the color to be a symbol. So now we have, yeah, blue points at three, red points at four. This is looking pretty good. And I think this actually might be the data structure that we want to work with. Okay. The elf wants to know which games would have been possible if the bag contained only these things. So we need to have some method here possible. And this is going to look to see if there are any invalid like moves in any round. And in end of, yeah, so what we can maybe do is just say, yeah, rounds.each. Let's iterate over the rounds. So rounds.each do round. That's going to give us, so each round looks like this. Okay. And then for each round, we want to see round.each do color. Yep. And we want to know if the color is red and the count is greater than 12, then return false. And if it's blue and it's 13, or if it's green and it's 14, I think that's right. Let's see. Green is 13 and blue is 14. Green is 13, blue is 14. Okay. So if, if the color is red and the count is out of range, then we want to return false. Otherwise at the bottom we'll return true. So then we want to take our games here and we want to say if it's possible, if g dot possible, g dot id, otherwise zero. And let's just see what we get back for r. Okay, so now we have one, two, five, and the ones that were not possible, we got zeros. So this is working as expected. Okay. And then at the end, we want to get the sum of those. We should get eight. Fantastic. All right. And now what we want to do is grab our puzzle input here, and we're going to add this at the end. Great. Okay. And then instead of each line here, we'll do data dot read lines. And we'll see if we get our answer two, five, nine, three. Was that our solution for part one, part one, two, five, nine, three. Awesome. Okay. So we've got an answer, and this is totally working. 
However, it's like, I don't know, it's a little bit naive and it's boring. We're just like looping and doing if statements and whatever. And the parsing part here is, ugh, it's just like gross and whatever. But part two. So the elf says they stopped producing snow because they aren't getting any water. Oh no. We're walking along. The elf poses a question. What is the fewest number of cubes of each color that could have been in the bag to make the game possible? Assuming that every game is possible, what's the smallest number of cubes? If we look at game three, for instance, because this has 20 red, then we would need at least 20 reds to make this game possible. And we would need at least 13 greens because that's like the maximum number of what was pulled in that game. So to do this, we want to find the maximum number for each color. So let's make a new method, max cubes. Oh gosh, what is in max cubes? So what we want to do is we want to iterate over each round again, rounds that each do round. And for each one, we want to find the max. And so to find the max, one way we can do it is keep track of some counts here in a dictionary where we have like red is zero, blue is zero, green is zero. And then for each round, we're going to go like rounds dot each do color. And then we'll say counts at the color equals the count. If the count is greater than counts at the color, and then we return counts. Okay. So this again is whatever. So this should, this should like work. So let's just print out, we'll print the line and we'll also print the max cubes just so that we can see some numbers here. Let's actually work with our with our demo input. Okay, for this one, the max is the max for red four, it is. And the max for blue is six and the max for green is two. That's looking pretty good. Let's look at our 20. So red 20, okay, fantastic. All right, so that's giving us our max cubes. Then as part of the solution here, we have to find the power of a set of cubes, which is equal to the number of red, green and blue cubes multiplied together. So we wanna go through the values for the max cubes and multiply those together. So let's just say like x power, and this will be max cubes dot values dot inject multiplication. So this will figure out the product of all of the values. So this is max cubes dot values gives us back an array of all of the values that are in max cubes. And then dot inject will iterates over each element in the array and multiplies by the product. So this should give us max power. Okay, so then if we do max cubes and max power, do we get what we expect? So 48, 12, 15, 60. So yeah, 48, 12, 15, 60, 630. And then at the end, what we want to do is what is the sum of the power of these sets? I think actually that might be what I'm printing out at the bottom, 2286. And that was 2286 in the example. If we disable our example input, enable our input, 54699, 54699, that is the answer. Awesome. Okay. But this is like a boring solution, right? Let's make it a little bit more interesting. One thing we could do for max cubes here is rather than creating this counts object and then iterating over it, there's an iterable method called each with object where we could pass in like a start object here. So we could say red is zero, blue is zero, green is zero. And then this becomes counts. And then that will be like the return value at the end. So we should still get the same number. Maybe this is backwards. Okay. Yep. Got the same number. Let's make this a little easier to read. So I'm just going to stop printing out these things and we'll know that this is working as expected. Oh, we just need to return G dot max power. We'll know it's working as expected as long as we get five, four, six, nine. So that's like our little integration test there. Okay. So rounds dot each with object. And then I don't know this, I guess it cleans it up a little bit. It, it's a little slightly ever so slightly better. What's more interesting is that now that we have max cubes, we don't really need to iterate over 
all of the rounds to see if it's possible. Now we can iterate over max cubes because max cubes is already figuring out the maximum value for each color. And if any of the maximums are greater than the restriction here, then we, we know that we're over. So what we could do is we could iterate over max cubes instead. I think this should work. So this is actually uh, this one that we want to test with. And 2593 was our answer here. Okay, so that's working still. Let's make this even more interesting, right? So we're iterating over max cubes. Instead of using the each method, let's use any um, or all. We want to know if any or all of these cubes are valid. There's a new feature of Ruby that was released in 3.1 with pattern matching that allows us to match against a range. And so what we can do is when we accept the color and the count as arguments to this block, we can construct a new temporary array on the left-hand side with color to count. And then what we can do is we can say, is this in a set of what we would call valid, valid like options or pairs? So for red, it's valid to have a range up to 12, blue up to 14, and green up to 13. If the dictionary of color to count in max cubes is in, um, actually no, so instead of, we don't want it to be in this entire range, we want it to be in the combination of each of these because the color to count is only going to be one of these. I think that makes sense. Let's see. Oh, nope, that's wrong. That is wrong. Is this blue 14, green 13? If any, oh no, if this has to be if all of them. Okay, 2593. All right, we're back to normal. Here, we're still iterating over each color and each count. I have a hunch that we can make this even more concise though. And I, because we're working with the max cubes, we, so one of the reasons why we might want to iterate here is I'm not sure if there's any games where we didn't pick any cubes of a single color. And if so, then we have to use this style pattern matching. If we pick, if we always pick cubes of each color, in fact, we must because max cubes, otherwise max cubes would have a zero in it somewhere, um, which would still be valid actually. Yeah, okay. So I think what we can do is actually say max cubes is in red up to 12, blue up to 14, green up to 13. Is that, does that work? Oh my gosh, nice, okay. So that makes our possible method super short, right? Now we just have this very clean pattern matching solution, which I am very into. I don't like that these are out of order, so let's do that. Okay, so now we are 2593, that's still working. And just for fun, let's change it back to our max power one. And this one should still obviously be working. So this is a pretty sick solution. I am really proud of this. So this came out nice. Uh, if there are other approaches to building out max cubes, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate your time and attention. If you want to follow along for all of the advent of code, like, subscribe, follow, all the things. Uh, I'll be posting the solutions on GitHub in a thread of gists. We'll be on Twitter. Um, so thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.